jail time. I don't think you can just skate up to a guy and whack him in the face, no puck or anything with your stick. So yeah, that's assault, but it's kind of hilarious. What's up GQ Sports? I'm Austin Matthews from the Toronto Maple Leafs and this is The Breakdown. All right, first up, Miracle. No one has ever worked hard enough to skate with the Soviet team for an entire game. Gentlemen, we are gonna work hard enough. You know, obviously at that time, the Soviet Union was kind of just so dominant in hockey in general, and so and I think he's just kind of laying out the groundwork for what he believes that they have to do to, to I guess, beat them, and, and then he puts them right to work, which I think I find pretty realistic. I played for for coaches that uh, their big thing was, you know, staying in shape and back skating us and, and making sure that you know we could uh, last the whole game and, and could skate. And as far as like a speech goes, um, you know, sometimes uh, it's it's necessary to have one of those. I find it pretty realistic because actually I played for coaches that. A lot of times, you know, they're kind of spanned for uh, bad habits and, uh, you know, botching drills and stuff was pretty short. So, you know, they just put us right on the line and it'd be stuff like this. So um, I can kind of relate to it. Do you do that now in current NHL practices? No, you know, we don't. I think uh, our practices are like pretty fast paced, so it's not like as necessary. But every once in a while, if, you know, maybe we haven't been playing well or botching all the drills in practice. You know, there's been times where we've had to do uh, something similar to that, but not really something that happens too often. You gotta think, 40 years ago, I mean, when you watch old hockey highlights, you know, the technique and what we have now, and you watch goalies, they're just so technically sound, and back then, mostly just kind of stand up, and you know, not much of a, a technique, just basically try to make a save, you know, if you have to put your face in front of it or whatever, so, you know, they're using wooden sticks, which obviously isn't really uh, something anybody uses anymore, but when you look at it, in the movie, the way they kind of, you know, stick handle and, and are shooting and the way the goalies are playing, it's kind of pretty much exactly the same and similar to, to how goalies were playing back in the 1980s. That's that's the mask the, the goalies were rocking back in the day and they're not much, not offering up much protection, but backtrack even further, I mean, they didn't even wear masks. Yeah, actually our goalie, Freddie Anderson, he, not that, particular uh, exercise, but he does drills with tennis balls before game, just to, I guess, hand-eye coordination, but, you know, goalies, even goalies today are doing that that kind of stuff, so, yeah, I mean, that, that guy didn't look like he was doing too well at it, but I've seen Freddie do it quite a bit, and he's pretty good. I've never done that before, but I've done something similar, but it's with a puck, and it's just like three guys kind of going up the ice, and like you pass to a guy, and then you go kind of take his spot, and so like when you look at it, it looks like everybody's kind of interweaving, but similar to that, I guess this right here. So I don't know, maybe they're just lining it up for what they want to do with the puck, but I've never really just done where you skate and just zigzag like that. How's your legs? Oh, I know, and I can feel them. Legs are kind of everything, I guess, in hockey, but you know, when you're doing kind of what they're showing there, just constant skating, the lactic acid builds up, and I mean, you're just gassed. Your lungs and everything are kind of just giving out, so you know, I think at that point, they've done so much. They're just to the point of exhaustion there, they can't really feel anything. It's funny, I was, uh, when I was in uh, like Bantams, so I was probably 14 years old, my team, we do like dry land, which is basically like off ice, and we actually did that exact exercise, so it's kind of funny to see it now. Take me through it here, Ma. I'm gonna stretch the D out and across. I'm gonna open up some space here. What are we gonna do with it? I'm gonna fill the open lane. And I'm gonna fill in for pads lane. Exactly, That's it, that's it. I think kind of like what I was just talking about, that one drill where you kind of pass the puck to the guy, he gets it and he kind of cuts into the middle and you kind of take his lane. Or I think they're kind of just working on their whole system and everything and making sure that guys are, are always in the right position and, and filling each other's lanes on, on the ice. So overall, this training sequence, everything they're doing on the ice, is it realistic? Does it happen? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just that one tennis ball, that's kind of you know, what I've seen Freddie do, something similar to that with three. So. I think you got to remember that this movie was kind of, you know, based back 40 years ago. So, you know, the type of training and, and stuff that they're doing probably is more old school. You know, I'm not sure how much you'd find 
uh, teams or coaches kind of doing that kind of stuff. But I know for myself, 15, 16, 17 years ago when I first started playing hockey it was stuff that we did on the ice and obviously find pretty, uh, pretty realistic. When you're kind of coming back in a training camp, you know, the practices and everything, they just continue to get faster and faster and the pace is so quick and, and the drills themselves kind of, you know, work yourself into that con conditioning aspect. But, you know, I think in a lot of other guys, you kind of use that preseason to kind of get your, your legs and everything back into game shape because you're playing games and that's what you're doing all year. So the miracle, pretty realistic, I'd say. Next up, the Mighty Ducks. Most unrealistic movie. <laughs> I want you to remember what we learned. Ducks stick together, right? Yeah! I think the uniforms are awesome. I think they look great. The skating's not bad either. I mean, you gotta remember they're kind of kids, so they're not gonna be like professionals out there, but I mean, so far, like, realistic, but I, I've seen this movie like a million times, so what they're getting into, I know I've never seen it before in a real life hockey game or anything, so. So right here, their helmets, the, the mask they're wearing, we, we call those bubbles. I actually used to wear one a little bit. You basically wear one up until uh, juniors, and then when you go play juniors, you can wear like a half shield, but then for some reason, then you go to play college, you go back to the full cage, or you can wear uh, like the full mask, a bubble, so. But yeah, I've seen plenty of kids kind of rock those growing up, but I was more of a cage guy. I wear just a half, like a half shield, the visor. I've been fortunate, I've only taken a couple couple up in that area, but I mean, it's kind of scary to so see you guys. You do get worried about that, but I don't know, it's like everybody wears them, so I don't think, you know, you'd probably get chirped if you're out there wearing a bubble or like a full mask. That's probably like the most unrealistic thing I've ever seen, but it looks unreal. As a kid, when you're watching this, it was like the coolest thing ever. And so like, you go play like shinny hockey with your buddies or just like practice, like something that really mean much. You kind of jokingly say like flying V and try to do something sort of like this, but I don't think you'll ever really see anybody do that in like an actual meaningful hockey game, but it, it looks pretty good on film. You can do that formation. I'm not sure like how well it's gonna work for you, but like this guy, like right here on the left, you see number 33 in black, like he's just gonna bulldoze him and he doesn't have the puck. It's so like, that's an interference. And then like basically the other guys are like picking or like blocking them and that's also interference, which is a penalty. And then suddenly like this guy with the puck just like is walking down mainstream, like on a breakaway because his whole teammate, like his whole line is interfered with every single other player on the ice, but they don't have the pucks, so that's like a penalty. It's great, I love it. But I don't know if you're really getting by with that in a real life hockey game. <laughs> that is exactly why the fine B is a no-go in real life. All right, let's fast forward here. You practicing that triple deke? Yeah. Then you're all set. You may make it, you may not. Yeah, it's like a move that, I mean, I don't think we call it the triple deke. I think it's like, we call it like dangle. So it's basically just like a move, like a, like with the puck. It goes like forehand back and then back to his forehand or maybe vice versa or something like that. But I mean, it's a move, it's a deke. And I mean, guys deke out there, so. I'd probably say it's like somewhat a little bit realistic. Okay, now which makes it you know. So the fact that he has no helmet on is hilarious. Yeah, this is, I mean, I guess illegal, but also it's like youth hockey, so like they're always gonna be like super, like, you know, keep your helmet on for like safety. It's kind of a rock star, honestly. Like I wish we could do that in like the NHL, just go in there with no helmet. But yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. I think it's so funny because like he's like really close to the net and like it's gonna be hard to like raise it that high and so like then they switch it. So like he shoots it and it looks like it's going low and then they switch it to like there and it's going like bar down, which is great. It makes like makes him look like an absolute beast. But I mean it's a nice deke. He he got the goalie. I also think that the little like the hundred circles that he did before he picked up the puck, like I, I definitely think there's some sort of like time limit, like as far as like when they blow the whistle and when you pick up the puck but he just went for like a little skate beforehand, did a couple circles, but all in all, it was a nice penalty shot. Yeah, I don't know like everything about goaltending, but they come out and then as the player goes in, they're, they're backing up trying to like, I don't know, figure out or like what you're trying to do or something like that. But, but yeah, I got him on that deke. Overall, The Mighty Ducks, I'd probably have to say not the most realistic movie, but 
for myself. It was one of my personal favorites growing up. So watching it now, years later, I love it. I find it a little bit funnier now, but you know, all in all, I love the movie, so. Next up, we got the movie Goon. Goon is about enforcers. Mm -hmm. So an enforcer is basically a guy that you know plays pretty physical, finishes hits, fights. In my experience, I played with a guy named Matt Martin, who's now in, in New York, but you know he's kind of a guy that they'd call an enforcer. So we had a lot of young guys, you know, other other teams, other players would kind of take rounds at us, and he was kind of the guy that would step in and you know fight or, or kind of step in as far as that goes. But they definitely do exist. You know, people kind of tend to think that they're on their way out, but you know, I think it's still kind of an important part of hockey to have a guy like that that you know can step up in, in times like that. It looks like men's league because they're all like old dudes out of shape. But I mean, everything that's happening on the ice like could, I guess, happen in like a real life game. But it's just funny that like they're all like out of shape and like kind of older. But. Come on now, let's go. Clear it up, clear it up, give me the puck. Yeah, uh, so like what he's doing is actually like fine and, and pretty realistic. It's more just like kind of getting body position and he just doesn't want him in front of the goalie like kind of screening him so he can see the puck. But I mean, that's not necessarily a penalty if you're just kind of like cross-checking him and just trying to move him. But if it kind of got, starts to get like really like physical and like borderline like dangerous, then that's kind of when they step in and call a penalty. But for the most part, the rest just kind of let it go or it's just like a net front battle. It's just funny that it's like Stifler from American Pie that's doing it. <laughs> I'm down, I'm down. Yeah, pause it. That's goalie interference, so that would have been blown down already, but obviously it doesn't, and then he takes like 15 shots to his mouth. Yeah, like if that happened just like right now, like they'd stop it right away because, you know, they'd be calling like the medical guys to be out, get on the ice and like kind of assess like, the, or like help the situation or whatever's going on. Now in the NHL, unless you've been grandfathered in. So if you wore no mask before they made the rule that, you know, wearing a visor was like you had to, you don't have to wear it. But if you're just coming in, like for myself, like I have to wear it. For the most part, everybody pretty much wears a visor. Are there a lot of teeth injuries? Yeah, there is uh, quite a bit. Not like on a nightly basis, but every once in a while you see something kind of gross, like not like that, but like the other night when Stats and he got a puck in the mouth and he's, you know, picking up his teeth off, off the ice. But, you know, a lot of little stuff like, you know, just taking a, a stick in the mouth or something like that and, you, you know, your tooth ends up being dead or, or whatever. But this kind of stuff, like, <laughs> I think what we're getting down to the point is this is not very realistic. Are you allowed to like hit people on the ice? You know, I think that's just like a thing. It's been in hockey for so long. I think fans like find it really cool and, and entertaining, but I mean, I've never seen anything like this where like the game ends and like the whole team just sheds their gloves and it's just an absolute brawl. I mean, there's been like line brawls and stuff like that, but a full like bench clearing, I mean, it happens maybe every blue moon, but the way they're doing it, like this is like assault, like you're going to jail for half the stuff they're doing. So yeah, a bit unrealistic. Next up, we got Young Blood. That's jail time. I don't think you can just skate up to a guy and whack him in the face, no puck or anything with your stick. So, yeah, that's assault, but it's kind of hilarious. Use that whistle for Christ's sakes. It's a five minute major, it's leaning all over the ice. Like, you get a five minute major for fighting, so it's like if you do something like really like illegal you wouldn't necessarily get kicked out for it, but it's like, you know, pretty like gruesome, I guess. Something like that, like where you whack a guy in the face with your stick. That's a five minute major. Go get him, Ray. <laughs> if you don't have your strap on it. I'm not sure it's like a penalty or anything, but I think the ref will usually just say like, you know, tell you to put it on or something. But yeah. if you're not strapped, I mean, you gotta stay strapped. shot yeah that's a pretty good shot pretty realistic a little too much time coming through the middle of the ice for that guy but uh, he made the most of it. it was a nice shot i'll give him that all right guys that's it thanks for watching me break down some hockey scenes we'll see you on the ice